Hi everyone, it's Nicole Spore and welcome back to my channel. Today I am so excited to be sharing a set of four cards with you today. They are Happy Place birthday cards. So I have had this My Happy Place die set for several months. It's from Spellbinders and my friend Kim sent it to me and I have wanted to use something with it and I think I kind of just shoved it underneath a pile and forgot about it. And I don't know what prompted me the other day, but I was like, I want to create something with this die set because it's totally my jam. You guys know I love die cutting and I have been sending out cards weekly on my Instagram. It's something new I have started. So every week I post a mail it Monday and I allow you guys to leave comments and I pick 10 sometimes more, Shh, that's kind of a secret, but sometimes more, and I've been mailing them out. And it's something, a goal for 2021, and I know we're still in 2020, um, but I started it a little early because it really brings me joy to send all of these cards that I have in my stash that I can't possibly send even just to my friends and family. I have so many since I do this as my job, and it is bringing me a in great amount of joy to do this every week. And I've had a lot of requests for birthday cards and plus we always need birthday cards. So I thought why not create some with this set and I'm super excited to, to share it with you. So this die set actually looks a lot like, I think it's a small world at Disney World. Um, and so you can definitely do other things with it which you're gonna see here today. It's a great kind of basic builder die set. And I decided to start my cards. I'd actually die cut. You can kind of see it across the top of the screen. I had die cut up the pieces from a bunch of different colors. But what I find when I am designing is I often don't particularly love a just solid cardstock background. I don't like a super busy background most of the time either. And I like to find ways to incorporate either stencils, stamps, pattern paper, those kind of things into a background that has some sort of subtle pattern to it that reinforces the theme of the card. That is where this My Favorite Things number jumble background stamp comes in. I used this months ago when I got this from a release here during 2020. This is a really amazing background stamp for all kinds of cards, but yes, birthday cards for sure. Um, and so I stamped it on some Simon Says Stamp fog gray cardstock with clear embossing ink and heat embossed with white embossing powder. So it's a very, very subtle um, white on light gray background that will simply reinforce that birthday theme that we're going to be doing with all the bright colors of cardstock that we're adding to our card design. I also want to mention that I did start with a four by five and a quarter inch panel, meaning it's going to leave a nice white border all the way around that kind of ties into the white embossing um, on our background and just mats up the center panel beautifully. Now I did die cut, there's I believe five dies, yes, that come in this set and they die cut all kinds of different shapes. Well, sometimes you're gonna need multiple shapes. So I ended up with a lot of die cut pieces. And originally I thought I would create two cards. I thought I would do a nice cute little row of buildings, houses, whatever you wanna call them, and then a row of candles. And after I designed these first two cards, I thought I don't wanna waste all of these extra pieces. Um, I probably could have created even more than the four cards you're going to see here today. Um, I just saved the pieces. We can use them on some, I can use them on something else at another time. But I decided after these first two cards, I couldn't leave it at that. I already had everything out. I already had all the supplies out. Why not go ahead and make two more cards? And so I will do that. I'm not going to share the creation of all of those on camera because it was really simply just a mix and match. My only goal with my two remaining cards was not to die cut any extra pieces. So I would only use things that I had out on my desk. It didn't matter if maybe I needed something specific. I tried not to make it where I would absolutely need something and I made what I had 
work, which was really a fun challenge. And I definitely challenge you guys to try that as well. So you can see for my first row, I did do a whole kind of rainbow row of buildings. We're gonna have pink, red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. That's what fit on my card front. And so that's kind of what I went with. I didn't die cut anything extra than that. And I'm simply piecing together the shapes. They very much remind me of the building block shapes like from when I was little, um, that little toddlers, you know, build with and things. And once I got into that mindset, because I will admit this first card, while it was my first one and I thought it was gonna be my best idea, I actually kind of like the cards where I was forced to use what I have a little bit better. And I think it's because I got into that mindset of building with these blocks, kind of, and I'm using air quotes, I know you guys can't see that. But when I started thinking of it in those terms, I really just, the creativity flowed. So it's a really fun project. I will tell you another idea that I did not share here today simply because as I said, I wanted to use what I had, but I've seen that you can create castles with this, which I think is so amazing. So if you've maybe got some princess or prince or dragon type of stamps or dies, I think you could really create some very cute um, castle style cards if you wanted to the possibilities are truly endless. I think that you could create all kinds of things with this. Now, once I have my row, I just need to fill it in. And you'll notice I have a celebrate die laying there on my panel. And that's just because I needed to make sure kind of visually everything was gonna flow. My idea was to have this row of houses, the celebrate's gonna slightly overlap that, and then I'm going to stamp and die cut a little phrase to go underneath it. I'm a big fan of a scripty style word with a smaller sentiment strip, whether it's a pre-made sentiment strip, a foiled sentiment strip, or in this case, a stamped and die cut sentiment strip. And we're going to make some custom ones to go with this design. This is also one of my most favorite kinds of projects where I'm pulling from multiple companies. I'm not just kind of sticking within one line or one company's collection. We've got a My Favorite Things background. We have a Spellbinders die collection. We have a Simon Says Stamp die and then a Simon Says Stamp sentiment set for the additional greeting. That is one of my favorite projects is when you go to your stash and pull from all kinds of different companies and bring it all together to make a truly unique project. It's hands down my favorite thing and I don't do it enough. I really wanna make it a goal here in um, 2021 to do more of these kinds of projects for you guys to show you how to really kind of extend the life of the products we have. Nothing I used here today is brand new, which again, I don't get to do all that often. And I think it is very um, fun to see how you can reinvent product you might already have to make completely brand new projects. Something else that I really love about this My Happy Place die collection this is not a birthday only set. Yes, I made candles uh, for one of the cards, which probably definitely is a little bit more birthday themed, but these houses could be used for lots of things. Um, you could consider putting a sunshine background on the background of this, and it could be, you know, a thinking of you, a hello, a friendship. Maybe you wanna do a heart background and you could change the colors of the houses to all be pinks and reds and more of Valentine's love theme. So definitely keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and build the candles. That long skinny block totally was screaming, I'm a candle, as well as the little kind of flame shapes, which I know don't have to be, and I've used them as kind of roof, uh, rooftop 
ornaments, ornamentation or anything like that for some of my other cards, but they definitely look amazing layered as flames. And I thought it would be fun to decorate all of the long skinny block with the other shapes to make decorative candles. So there's lots of candle type dies out there, but most of them don't have all of these different shapes to decorate the actual candle itself. I thought this was really fun. Um, I tipped them all kinds of at angles. They're also a pretty good size. You can see that they're taking up about half of the bottom of this panel. So they're really gonna fill in that area nicely, leaving you with a nice little space up above for the die cut sentiment and the sentiment strip. So while the design changes from card to card, I mean, three of them do have buildings um, and one has these candles, but none of them are exactly the same. The sentiments, the die cut celebrate sentiment will be the same on each, just the placement might change. And then I used four different stamped phrases just to have added interest, but you could definitely do them all the same if you wanted to. And I am just kind of building up these candles. I left this in the video since this was so much different than the first card where we're using the blocks to build houses. We're building candles here. Really a super versatile die set for, I need to probably go look it up. Maybe I will, hold on one second. So I went and double checked, it's $9.99. So this die collection is really a nice value and you can do a lot with it. And if for my Disney lover friends out there that are like me, you can, totally make cards that look like it's a small world, which I think is really neat. I kind of thought I would go that direction to begin with, and then I morphed the project. It's funny how projects sometimes take on a life of their own, but it morphed more into birthday cards, which, you know, it's a small world would work for that as well. But I kind of went more bright and colorful. I think if we would go a little bit more pastel or neutrally pastel, I don't know. I mean, you know, anything would work here, but you could definitely do that kind of theme as well. So bright and colorful rainbow was what I was going for. It's really gloomy here today where I live. And so I was definitely feeling the bright, colorful rainbows. We're after Christmas now, so I'm kind of ready to move on from the Christmas theme for the moment, I never really get away from it too much. I do love Christmas and um, so it's just nice to see some bright colors for our card making and do something a little bit different. I knew I wanted to fill in a little bit more area with candles so you'll notice that I ended up using both a light and a dark pink candle and then I'm using the light and the dark base as of the blue candles. I could have done that with any of the other colors as well. Um, I guess I, that's just the ones I picked, but I wanted, I didn't feel like the six candles was quite enough. And so we're going with eight because that fills in the area just a little bit better. So all of these pieces, I did not alter. Little blocks, triangles, rectangles, circles, squares, and then the little flame shape. All of these are just as is. I kind of just used them and adjusted them to make them work. My favorite candles are probably the reddish one, that kind of raspberry candle. I like the triangles on that. And then this blue one I just did with the triangles. I actually really love that one. And then the green polka dot. Um, I don't know why. I just really kind of liked those. I like all of them, but I thought those worked out really nicely. So it was definitely a, just a trial and error and really kind of just like playing with blocks. And then I did try to just use whatever extra pieces I had lying around. 
Um, I'd already, you know, die cut some of the dies multiple times, just needing different blocks for the first card. So there might be duplicates. When there are duplicates of those shapes, it worked out super great to do things like this pink candle where I use these two triangles here, um, kind of bottom to bottom, and then finishing it with a little circle die on top. So definitely tried not to go die cut lots of extras. I had to for the triangles for those two cards and then those little tiny bars on the stripes for the other candles. I had to do that. I had to um, cut, die cut multiples for both of those to kind of finish off the design. And I decided on the pink candle just to have that little stripe up at the top and not do the whole thing because it required die cutting that single die multiple times to get those little stripes. I will tell you too, I noticed after I had photographed and filmed this, um, that I did not trim off the excess for that candle clear over on the right, the striped candle. Off camera, I did trim that up so it's straight across. It's funny how sometimes you don't notice those things even when you're photographing it oh well so I did want to mention that because in case you guys notice I know you guys will um, I did snip that so it looks straight and nice um, and doesn't hang down off the edge I did have to die cut multiples of the flames luckily that shape is kind of all on one die together so I just did it from the dark yellow light yellow and orange and kind of mixed and matched to create the flames on the top of the candles so these are the extra pieces I didn't want to bore you guys with my assembly I did do that off camera I kind of played around with the blocks and then I'm going to assemble them I thought it would be fun to maybe try at the bottom of the panel building the houses and then putting the greetings up above so we're going to do that for that this one and then the other one will be kind of in the center like the first card again remember i simply used whatever i had lying around so it was a little bit more of a what can we make work a little bit of trial and error and i didn't want to bore you guys with um how much trial and error there was but so much fun. I will not assemble these completely on camera, but we'll move on here in a second to the rest of the assembly of these cards. I hope this has inspired you. If you maybe have some of those kind of more geometric shape kind of dies in your stash, of finding fun and unique, unique ways to create some really neat card designs with those. I know Simon Says Stamp has some new ones that I have not yet used, and I'm really excited to do some cards with those, so um, definitely stay tuned for that because those will be coming soon. I do want to mention really quick, because this video is going to be going up, I believe, on the 29th. There is a really fantastic sale at Simon Says Stamp on all their Simon Says Stamp branded dies. You can save 30%. There is a coupon code. I will put it in the description down below this video. So definitely with a link if you want to shop for Simon branded dies. So the Celebrate and the sentiment labels that I'm using here today are Simon branded. They have a whole bunch. It is December, so there's been a lots of fantastic releases this month during the month that are Simon branded. So if you have some things on your wish list that you want to grab, this would be a fantastic time to do so. And that is, I believe, until the first. I will have that information for sure down below here in the video description. Because I'm not using quite as many buildings on these final two cards, I kind of combined some different combinations um, as far as like the, I put the pinks and reds together and the yellows and oranges, and then I kind of kept the greens and blues separate. Now, once I have all of this done, we're going to take the uh, Tiny Words birthday stamp set from 
Simon Says Stamp, which I love all of their Tiny Words stamp sets, and we are going to stamp those greetings. We're also going to adhere all of our backgrounds to white top fold card bases. So what I found easiest was I just grabbed the four sentiments or phrases that I wanted to use for my cards, and I'm going to lay them on a white piece of cardstock in my Mini Misty, and I am going to stamp these all with Simon Says Stamp Smoke Gray Ink all at one time. Um, I did ink them twice just to make sure that I had a really good impression. I talk about this all the time in my videos, but ink choice is so important. So this is bright, colorful. There is no black anywhere on these cards. And I felt like a nice gray that ties into the background and is still neutral and it's gonna tie into the holographic cardstock I'm using for the Celebrate die would be the best choice. It's not gonna take away from the design. Instead, it's gonna complement it and keep the focus on these beautiful die cuts. So I use that gray ink. I am die cutting these into strips. You could trim them into strips. You don't have to use a coordinating die. I like to die, line up the die with one side, run that through, flip it around, and run it through again so it just has that perfect die cut edge. I love sentiment label dies. They are a staple in my stash and something I use all of the time. We're gonna do that for all four of those phrases. And then we're going to go ahead and put some adhesive on the back of the Celebrate Wafer die. I die cut that from Simon Says Stamp Holographic Cardstock that is new from the latest Love You release. Beautiful holographic cardstock. I like that it is a little shiny and it looks so nice with the colors here. It's It definitely stands out, but it doesn't take away from the rainbow colors of cardstock we used. I'm just putting a little liquid adhesive on the back and then placing it where I want it to go on the card. And then we're gonna put foam adhesive back behind our sentiment strip and pop that up underneath. And that's gonna be the same for all four cards, whether I uh, put them up above the, the images or kind of overlap. I love my sentiment strips popped up with a little foam adhesive. Gives a little dimension. So this looks great. I love everything about this, but I feel like I need just a little embellishment. So I think for this one, we're just gonna put one little red heart on here. I like that little inclusion of red. I like that little dimensional embellishment. This is just a little clay heart from Trinity Stamps. And then for this card in particular, I didn't do this for any of the others, of course, but the flames, I am gonna take a little Nouveau Crystal Drops in White Blizzard and put that just in the center die cut piece so that it has a little sparkle to it in the finished card design. And we're gonna set that aside to dry while we kind of finish up the rest of the cards. We are gonna utilize these little red clay hearts though. So I'm using my Spellbinders tool-in-one to pop out any of those little inside pieces from the Celebrate wafer die. I'm using tweezers to hold on to that while I pick it up and put adhesive on it and put it in place. Love my craft tweezers for keeping my fingers out of the adhesive as much as possible. And then where it overlaps, I'm gonna put an acrylic block on top to kind of help hold it flat. I'm also using my T-square ruler. I think this row of, this is the first card I made. I don't know that they're super straight. I can see now with my ruler that they're not, but hopefully it's not too noticeable. And there's what it looks like with the little sentiment and the little clay hearts. Here is a look at all four finished cards. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this set of four birthday cards utilizing the Spellbinders My Happy Place dies. The supplies I use to create my cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another video featuring die cutting that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss a new card making or paper crafting video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll catch you next time.